You're listening to Jimmy Falcon and Grim Lena from the gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling on the Cloverleaf Radio Network. Well, we are back for another edition of Cloverleaf Radio. And, of course, as everyone can hear, I have my wonderful co-host, Grim Lena, on the air for her first episode. Grimmy, welcome to Cloverleaf hey, Radio. Hey, thanks for having me. Glad to be aboard. Well, uh, Todd, what Super Bowls did you cover while working for KSUSA and TV in Denver? Oh, I did. Uh, I did uh, Super Bowl 32 and Super Bowl 33, both when the Broncos beat the Packers, which is actually a highlight of my sports Go career Broncos. because it was uh, that was uh, when when Elway won it. Uh, we had we had done the John Elway show as well, but he actually high fived me coming off the field after he won it. And being born and raised in Denver and seeing Elway lose three previous Super Bowls, you know, he didn't have the team around him. It was brutal. But yeah, I did uh, that one and then the next one in Atlanta. And in radio, I as a matter of fact, uh, Denver did. Yeah, I didn't let my husband yeah, move it down. I was always, I was also back involved in 1989 when they went to the Super Bowl, and I went down to New Orleans and I was covering for radio, and Denver got beat 55 to 10 by San Francisco, Joe Montana, and the Jerry Rice show. It was brutal. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. I bet. Well, my question that I have is, what was it like wrestling? such greats as Terry Funk and Harley Race in the NWA. Well, that was the experience, too. The NWA, well, you know, is a lot different than the WWE, but when you wrestle guys like Terry Funk, Harley Race, and that, you're wrestling the cream of the crop because both of them were world's champions, and that was the experience that, uh, you know, I'll carry for the rest of my life. But anyway, what was it like working with uh, Christina Applegate and Don't Tell the Mom, Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead? That was a scream of a movie. So funny. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. I uh, I hope that some of the uh, uh, you know the relationship stuff between Christina and myself was obvious. You know, was a put on. I mean, we're not antagonistic and we're not in any way, shape, or form a, a fighting brother and sister, husband and wife duo. Um, but uh, I'd known her for many years before. Never worked together with her, but had seen her at you know kids functions and social events and auditions and uh, in circles of friends of friends. Uh, and so to get a chance to work with Christina, and you know she's uh, you know at the height of her career in the middle uh, at the height of the Married with Children run. Um, uh, and I have ultimate respect for her, and you know she's such a hard worker, and it's very hard. Uh, for uh, anyone to carry a picture, uh, it's very you know you work really really hard in really crazy circumstances. It's you know uh, really fun work, and everyone of course would be like, oh, they're just you know complaining. Well, you know it's it it can really be hard in the you know two and a half months into a movie, and you've been grinding away 12, 14 hours a day, six days a week for this whole time, and you have to look pretty. So. You know, Christine Applegate did an absolutely fantastic job, not only carrying the movie, but showing her intelligence and charm and chops. Her comedy chops are priceless. And it was a different, more subtle comedy, more intelligent, uh, not intelligent comedy, but aimed for a you know, slightly different audience. Uh, kids could really enjoy it. Adults wouldn't be totally turned off by the film. It's still watchable. I love it. I, uh, I would like your opinion on working on stage versus working in TV. A uh, huge difference. Um, there are, you know, different processes, you know, creative processes, uh, obviously. And uh, the most important thing on stage is, you know, the directness of, of it all. You are there on the stage and the public is right there in front of you, right? And, you know, you cannot make mistakes because there is no another take, you know, or another five takes and so forth. And there is nobody to help you with editing and lights and everything else. I think it's much more intimate and, and uh, theater is. Uh, television is always a, a great experience also, but different. ISIS, there have been yes. a ton of rumors running around uh -huh. the Internet about you possibly <laughs> joining TNA. Can you put any reference to those rumors? <laughs> No, as I've stated recently on all of my social networks, I will not be confirming nor denying any rumors about me joining TNA or WWE. I cannot talk about this right now and probably not for a few more months, so um, <laughs> there will be no 
confirmation nor denial on those two companies. Okay. And Johnny, mm -hmm. I have a question for you. First okay. of all, when are you going to have Gremlino on Revolutious? No, I'm kidding. Uh, what are your hopes for Revolutious <laughs> heading in 2011? Well, say again, sorry. What are your hopes for, for Revolutious heading into 2011? Well, you know, we're we're trying hard to uh, to build this brand, you know, out of nothing basically. You know, we just we started in uh, 2009 and, and kind of came out of nowhere, and uh, pretty soon we were the uh, third most distributed wrestling company in the, in the world, and uh, ahead of ROH, ahead of you know, Ring of Honor, and behind uh, right behind TNA. So we want to keep uh, on that upward you know trend and uh, keep building our brand, and hopefully we're going to have a stronger uh, TV deal this time around, uh, this this next season in 2011, and I think that'll help us too. So we still have a, a strong international deal in place. So those are uh, those are you know a couple of our goals and aspirations for the brand for this year. Okay, 